Um, another uh, issue that a lot of people talk about that kind of hold them back from homeschooling is the socialization, the social aspect. And um, so I wanted you to talk a little bit about your kids um, and their social activities. And and I was just going to bring this up because I know you said you're very research oriented and, I, and I, I am too. I like to be organized and know, you know, what subjects they're doing and getting enough time in. And I have felt sometimes even with social activities that I almost treat it like a subject, like making sure that they have, you know, so many social interactions or social activities in a particular week or in a day, um, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But I also, I, when I started homeschooling and thinking about it, I had a friend um, and she taught, I was asking her about the socialization and she talked about, you know, she had a boy and a girl, she had two kids and she said, well, they socialize with each other. You know, they have each other. And I thought, oh, that's true. Like, you know, we think like that in the home, that, that somehow that doesn't count. Um, but I know, so if you want to talk, obviously in the home, you know, you can talk about the importance of socialization in the home. But also, do your kids have social activities outside of the home? Do you plan those or is it just kind of spontaneous? Well, you know, how those come out? Um, well, so when my girls were in ballet classes, so that was kind of like um, a natural where their social group is. So as, as they grow older, they dance more and more times per week from once a week when they were six to right when my oldest, when she graduated, it was like four or five times a week. In fact, my 13 year old, she's at dance class five days a week. And so that's where her group is, you know, her peer, her friend group or okay. whatever you call that. And my son was in karate. So he goes three times a week. And so again, that was... That is his group. And other times, you know, like we, when they were little, we were, I would plan um, play dates with other homeschoolers. And like you say, sometimes you just feel like, oh, it's taking out, out of my day when I have scheduled work. But like you can't treat that, like, okay, that's kind of the allocated time. So, um, but then as they grow older, they kind of, you know, evolve to, you know, the top outside of dance. So I don't really need to. Um, specially arrange anything. Although last weekend I did have my daughter with a few friends. I brought them, you know, go to the mall and they got to hang out and do stuff like that. Um, yeah, I was kind of worried about the socialization aspect too, but I read so much and a lot. One thing that really caught my attention is how natural it is that for kids to socialize in their with kids their same age, such as in a classroom situation, because really you are just socializing with like kids of the same age. And in the real world, you don't necessarily really be interacting on a daily basis with people your age all the time. You know, you some maybe you meet someone older, younger, different gender, or whatever. So um, yeah, I feel like, you know, um, my kids do... They, they can talk to adults as well as little kids. And, you know, it, it felt more natural. And that was a shift in the mindset of what socialization looks like. And it also helps, too, that, you know, um, they did modeling and acting for a few years. So they had to go into an audition room. And I remember one time when my daughter entered a room where there were like six people sitting at the desk and she was auditioning for a commercial or something like that. And I was thinking, wow, at six years old, she went in there and she could just like, you know, answer their question or do whatever they say. I say, I was thinking, I, I wouldn't be able to do that at six years old or at 12 or 15, yeah. you know. So through these sort of activities, they actually um, gain certain skills that I wouldn't be able to provide them in my homeschool or even in a classroom situation if they were to go to traditional school, you know? So, That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and that, you're kind of answering this, this last question. So how do you proactively contribute to your children's social life? And along with that, do you ever talk to your kids about their, their social skills and how, how do they self-assess their social skills? Have you ever had that conversation with them? Well, um, indirectly, yeah, I, I think over time I have. Like, for example, um, 
you know, um, when my daughter was a few years, many years, like, well, four or five years ago, when she was ha having some kind of friends issue, you know, like people were just ostracizing her. And so I saw all that, but I just encouraged her, you know, like um, when you see them, you still say hi, you still say bye, you know, and you still talk to them, even though if you know, still reach out despite being rejected. It was a hard lesson. But then now, you know, these friends are her friends now. You know, so we have walked through some of those journey and um, other, uh, like, uh, okay, so another example is like when my oldest was at dance, um, I always encourage it when you see a new girl who just joined the dance here, because people tend to know each other already, just reach out to her. So she has become the girl who always, when she see a new girl, she will go out and make conversation. Because I say that, you know, like I try to explain, you know, like it is tough being a new person in a place where everybody already knows each other. And just remember how you felt when you were the, uh, the new girl, you know, so over time, you know, so it, they are, that's the kind of conversations we have. Um, when my son started texting, having the phone, and he said, and then he would text his friend, hi, and then when the friend didn't reply, he would say, hi, 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 hi. So I have to talk about, you know, you know, you just have to wait for people to respond. Don't spam them with like, so these are some things, right. some skills that they don't know, but you basically have to teach them, you know, right. like, um, yeah, so we do talk about some of the social yeah, aspects, how to great, interact. About, like yeah. I said, when, yeah, and having the time to have the, because when I would have social interactions at school, my parents wouldn't, they didn't know about it. Yes. I didn't tell them, you know, but now, like I said, we're around each other and I can kind of see here and there and kind of, you know, but also knowing when to intervene and when not exactly. to. Um, yeah. And but because yeah, you know of, them so well. Of, yeah, because you know who they are with, you, you kind of, it also helped you to have that conversation. So, how so and so doing? And then so she would tell you, you know, like she's just been very sad. So, oh, maybe you can, you know, offer to pray for her, or you can write her a note to encourage her. You know, like you could offer a suggestion on how to. Maybe they don't know that. Maybe for some kids it's natural, but for some it may not be. So you are um, through conversations like that, you are able to. Give them suggestion. What are the some of the options? Maybe you should text them to see how they are doing, you know, things like that. You know, yeah, because you know yeah. who they hang out with. You could ask how so and so, you know. Right. Yeah, and helping them to learn. Hey, I need to ask, or I need to, you know, not just focus on myself, but focus yes. on focus on others. Um, well, thank you so much, Charlene. I am going oh, to need to wrap up. Um, yes, for this time. But yeah, I'd love to have you come back. I have, I'm sure I have plenty more, more questions for you, Sure, but thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye.